Hello and welcome to Lilybrook. Yep, same jumper, same shirt, same day as the previous video. Now I get comments occasionally about the hill, the contours, the slopes, how do you play a shot above the feet, below the feet, that kind of thing. So uh, we're going to start here on the 12th and uh, play the seven hilly holes, although 17's rather flat. So we're going up there. Well, if there's a cruel hole on this golf course, this is it. 90 degree dog leg to the right. I've left the camera in widescreen. But essentially, as soon as your ball hits the ground, it's getting further away from the hole, not closer to it. So you've got to try and drive as tight as you can to that corner. Hit a fade, perhaps. Now, coming up the hill here, you need more club. So I've got a 5 wood from 180. And being on an upslope, the ball's going to go high and there's a very good chance of a pull or a draw. But I don't mind that because that, uh, that puts me pin high. And if you want cruelty, then you've got a green at the end of it. That'll kill you. Thirteen has a big step in the fairway. I always try to get over it. And as you can see, it slopes heavily left to right. So my choice here is a draw, just to try and hold the ball left. If you miss this fairway to the right, then it goes a long way right. So um, this is why I choose to go over the top with a three wood. Any layup gathers to this right side of the fairway and can end up in the rough there. And it's a bit divot city down here, but um, you can't see a lot of the green from here. This is a hugely difficult shot. Ball so far below the feet. You've got to try and normalize this as best as possible. And the only way you can do that is to get those knees bent. Now with a long iron, this would slice, but with a short iron, it should go fairly straight. Right then, 14. Probably the strangest golf hole on the planet. No matter what I hit over the top here, the chances of finding the fairway are, I don't know, 5%, 2.5%, whatever it might be. I do hit the rescue over here sometimes, and I do hit the driver, and occasionally um, either a 5 wood or a 3 wood. But let me tell you something about this mound doesn't belong there. Back in the early 1940s we had a lot of American servicemen over here preparing for D-Day and we had them camped out on, the, on this golf course apparently. Well they made that lump. And nobody knows why. There's an old boy in the club he knows that that was dug out mounded up by American servicemen but nobody knows why. What club should I go with today? Now to normalize this shot with the ball above your feet, it's gonna hook. So I stand taller, I go down the shaft just to uh, try and normalize the ground condition and I move the ball a tiny bit back in my stance to try and stop the draw. And I seem to have achieved it this time. Well this is the area I was hoping for, was to get on this area here, beyond the 150 yard markers, 
course when you hit driver then you go down that steep slope I mean you've seen us there plenty of time my five iron oh you can't see it there it is just about all out of focus but it's there underneath the hole Simon Right, we've made it to number 15 now 12 is a hole I don't expect to get on in two very often. 15 isn't either. Especially if we're playing a competition and the tees are back here in the chute, even further back. The problem is, is this fairway sits against you. So you're landing into an upslope and it just kills your drive. It also slopes right to left. Now the big guys, and I do mean the big guys, what they do is they tee off here and they go over this line of tree with a draw. Then they catch the downslope and they run down into the bottom and they've only got 70, 80 yards for the second shot. Me, I'm, I'm most likely to have, well, 160 if I hit a really, really good one when the tee's on the front. But it's not on the front today. So if I've got less than 175 into this green, I'll be very, very happy. Same as the 14th hole, ball above the feet, down the shaft, stand a little taller and try and normalise the condition. But I get this one a little bit slightly wrong, as you can see. So I was back there, almost level with the 150s. But if you do hit a long one, the guys come over these trees with a draw. And then they run down here into the bottom leave themselves about 80 in. Oh, let's go and play my mistake. Well, the lie's good, so I'm going to take the sand wedge and fly it. I got about 30, 31 yards. On 16, there is not a single flat spot on this fairway. It slopes heavily left to right. There's no way you can really lay up into. And as I've been struggling with this hole, I'm taking great care to get lined up properly at least. So it's just bang the driver off the end of the planet. You can see, let the ball work its way down into the bottom. See what you get. As I say, wherever this finishes, it's not going to be flat. Yep, I popped it up. Now, one thing I'm enjoying after this lesson is I'm starting to hit my wedges properly. And that is proper. So many times I've hit thins from down here. Oh, you 
kidding me? You are kidding me. I'm just not going to say anything about the putting tonight. Even when I get a, even when I hit a good putt, I take it up the, well, the last dregs of light. There's, there's plenty of time to actually get round, but obviously the picture quality is going to suffer a bit now. The notorious 17th, big pond on the right. And it cuts into the front right of the green a bit. It's at an angle, so it's really in your face. And then you've got the two bunkers on the left and the standard trees on the left if you go even further left. But there's a huge slope left to right, short of the green. So um, you can use that to run the ball in. And I do try, although sometimes it just goes completely wrong. Now I would have a shot here, it's stroke index 6, but the World Handicap took that shot off me. Here's a question for you. Curly played in the first competition. He shot 8 over his handicap. So under Kongu he would have got a point one back. Under the World Handicap system, his handicap index got cut. So uh, you tell me what's good about the World Handicap system. Because I don't bloody know. So this is the hole you really want to play. What a way to end a round of golf. Now the direct line to the green is over the top of this tree and there's a lot of trees to get over. So you know if you're a big hitter you can go for that but anything slightly right you're in the car park. So we go down at these green fir trees here and try and hit a little fade on the southwesterly wind to take us a little round the corner. It's been a north wind today, so I don't know what's going to happen, but what a view all the way over to the Malvins and the sun peeking through. What a way to end a day off, well not a day off work, a day after work. Yeah, lovely. Let's try not to spoil it. <laughs> 